everybody, this is the continuation of my Power BI series on buried treasure, um, where I'm going to focus on the optional parameter of the selected value um, DAX function. And in my previous video earlier this week, I talked about how you could use this optional parameter to do error trapping and to make your reports look better, to avoid kind of ragged blanks, and um, to add some complex logic to your your selections. Um, in today's video, what I want to talk about is a totally different way to use that optional parameter, and that's for debugging. And in addition to showing you this, which is one of my most frequently used techniques for debugging DAX, um, I'm going to show you a new technique based on some new features that have come to Power BI that I think probably are the best addition to the the program that I've seen this year. Um, it's kind of a toss-up maybe between that and field parameters, but it's pretty great. And so I'll show that to you at the end of the video. So basically what we've got here is, is the same example that we were using in the first um, video. And what we've got is just, again, a simple data model. And if we take a look at that, we'll see that it's just, it's, it's a basic star schema. Um, and we're going to focus here primarily on just our dates and our channels tables along with our fact table. Um, so let's just jump back into the report and take a look at the at the DAX measure. And this this is it looks it looks a bit complicated at first glance, but it's really pretty straightforward as to what's going on here. So what we've got is we've got the first two variables are just harvesting the the value of our slicers, and so these are just simple selected values for year and for channel and then what we're doing is we're 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 basically building out this virtual version of the the table in our visual um, so we're looking at product names and we're looking at um, total sales for each each product in in the given year and that we're we're filtering by the selected year and the selected channel name and what we're doing is we're taking the top two, the top two values in that table in descending order. So if you think of this in, in some sense as a deck of cards, we're, we're taking the top two cards off that stack. And then what we're doing in the second variable is we're flipping that stack over and taking the first card. So top n one of that virtual table, that stack of two, and this time we're taking total sales in ascending order. And so we're taking basically the, the bottom card off that two card stack. And then all we're doing here is what would in Power Query would be a split by delimiters. But in DAX, we do it by substituting the blank for a vertical bar. And that creates the parent child hierarchy where we can just use the path item command path item two to get the the second element of that of that product name and we're just going to format that as an integer and just return that so that's that's the logic of the measure that we've got and if we look at um if we look at this so you know wholesale for 2022 um, the second top seller is product one, and we take the one from that, and that's correct. And then we go to distributor, and again, product one is the, the number two seller. And then we go to export, and ooh, now we got a problem um, because product seven is the top, is the second best seller, but the the DAX measure is still returning product one. So we got to figure out what's going on here. And the way I typically like to do this for, for fairly complex measures is to use Tabular Editor 3 because it lets you visualize those virtual tables. And so let's jump into, into Tabular Editor 3. Let's go to our debug measures. And this is going to be the expression we want to we wanna look at. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to we want to look at the at the DAX query version of this. So let's copy this into a new DAX query since what we want to return is not the the scalar of the measure, but we want to return the table of the DAX query and take a look first at that that V table um, 
measure. And so um, DAX queries typically start with evaluate, and we can change the return statement here to vtable. Since measures can't return tables, um, but DAX queries can. So we're going to take a look at this, and let's hit F5 to run that query. And what we see is, okay, it's giving us our product names, but our total sales in the virtual table is blank. And we know that's not correct because it, it clearly was returning a value, if not the correct value, at least a value in the, in the, in the report. And the reason for that is in the report, when you've got these two, these two harvest measures, these, these have to be in context with the the slicers in which, that they're harvesting and so basically in this in this debug environment these two harvest measures have no ability to see those slicers and so what we can do is we can actually use the alternate parameter so if we if we go back to our report and we change these two these two measures and we could we could do this within tabular editor but I wanted to show it to you just in the um, in the report itself um, we can add this alternate parameter and what this does is if selected value does not return a single value it returns the alternate and so in this case for the channel name if it's not finding the proper the proper value in context we wanted to return export and for year for debug purposes we want it to return 2022 if it doesn't find a selected year and now if we go back into tabular we now see um, that it is returning a value, but it's returning the wrong value. And what we can tell from this is that it's returning the same, the same value for each product. And if we look back at our report, what we can see is it's actually returning the total value for all products in each of the each of the total sales slots by product. And what that, what that indicates is a problem with context transition. And so what we can do if we go back to, to tabular editor is we can take a look and we can see here that we've got total sales and we've got some of um, the line total of the sales table. And this is where the context transition problem is occurring. So there's two ways we can fix this. We can either wrap this in a calculate statement. And if we do that and hit F5, now we see that it's returning the, the, correct, the correct values. Or what we can do is we can, we can change this from a, a sum to our total sum measure total sales measure and that will that will also conduct the the context transition and you can see here that it it does return those those two rows that we want um, and so what we've got is we've got product 9 and product 7 and now what we can do is we can we can run another check, which is instead of returning the virtual table here, we can copy this this table out of the um, out of the um, result measure and paste that into the return section and just see if it's returning the the one um, the one row from the um, from the second measure and if we hit f5 we'll see that in fact it is and it's returning product 7 correctly so this shows that the alternate parameter is a way of kind of forcing that slicer to evaluate 
in the proper context, even when you're outside of the context of that report. And that that's a really powerful technique. Um, you can you can now go back and change this. Um, so if we if we change the um, the harvest channel measure, for example, um, let's do that, and let's change this to wholesale. And we've now got to just hit Control Alt S to sync the model. And if we if we jump back to our to our DAX query, Control Alt S, you'll see that it returns product one, which is in fact the correct the correct product for um, the wholesale uh, channel. So that is, that is how you use um, tabular editor along with the alternate parameter to debug. But I want to show you, I want to show you one additional way that has become possible thanks to the, the additional of, of a couple of, of, a, of a new DAX function in the November 2022 update. And that, that measure is 2CSV. And what 2CSV does is, it actually lets you return a a table. Um, it sends it sends your your measure output to a table, and we can look at it down here. And so this is this is sending that top end one table to CSV, and in the format we're we're saying okay we want it to return one row, and then what we want it to do as the delimiter in between columns is to repeat this non-printing space 10 times and not to show the headers. And so let me show you what, what happens when we, when we drop this measure into, um, into our report. And I think this is pretty great because what it allows you to do is evaluate that, that table in proper context without having to go to an external tool to do so. And so it's not it's not formatted great, but it, it gets you what you need. Um, so what we can see here is for export. And let's actually change just to show you that you don't need, in this case, you don't even need the um, the alternate parameters to force the context. That we can take these out, and it'll still work because it has visibility to the the slicers. Um, so we can we can take this out and what we can do is show that it's still it still is showing for export it's still showing basically the table with the the one row product seven and the the sales data which matches this sales data and then if we change to distributor it changes the table to the correct the correct value and does so for wholesale And actually does the same if we if we change year. So right here, product six, 2.55 million, and product six, 2.55 million. So this is an incredibly powerful tool for for debugging and doesn't require the um, the external tools like DAX Studio or Tabular Editor three. Now there are still some really good reasons to use those. That Tabular Editor three, for example, lets you filter and sort once you've got the equivalent of this table. Um, but for for a lot of debugging purposes, this will work just fine. So I hope you found that helpful. I hope it provides some food for thought and some useful tools for debugging your complex measures um, in ways that you might not have considered in the past. And um, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources 
and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.